Ninjago has had many kings rule its different locations, let's take a look at them all. The original king of the underworld was Samukai before Garmadon was banished and usurped him. Not much is known of his rule, but he is of course the four-armed skulking general, tasked by Garmadon to find the four golden weapons. When he succeeded, he betrayed Garmadon trying to take the weapons for himself. But little did he know, no one could handle all of their power at once. Except Garmadon of course, the new king of the underworld, and the king of shadows. Garmadon grew two extra arms and increased his strength in the realm of madness so that he could take the four weapons for himself without any negative consequences. After uniting the Serpentine tribes as one, Pythor became the Snake King. He set about finding the four silver fang blades hidden throughout Ninjago so that they could be brought together in Ouroboros to release the Great Devourer. He succeeded, but it didn't go as he hoped, and he was instead eaten by the Devourer as she set about her task of consuming all of Ninjago. She was then later destroyed by Garmadon, of course, and with Pythor gone, the Serpentine soon rallied behind him, much to the dismay of the four generals. But when searching for the Dark Islands, Scales managed to rid the snakes of Garbadon, and he became the new king. King Scales' first task was to burrow under Ninjago and destroy it from below, but when he came across a tomb full of stone warriors, the Serpentine became trapped, and instead settled for a new, peaceful life below the city. As king of the Jin and father of Nadakan, we didn't know Kanji Khan for long before Jinjago was destroyed, but he did pass on the Jin Blade to Nadakan, asking him to avenge the Jin. When Nadakan married Nia on Jin land, he became the new king and was bestowed infinite wishes, the greatest gift of all. But it wouldn't last, as battle ensued with the ninja and his former first mate struck him with the Tiger Widow Venom. Before Jay's last wish erased all of his efforts, now all that remains of Skybound is a memory and a floating temple. Introduced in Sons of Garmadon, the Emperor seemed to be a kind man who the ninja were hired to protect from the SOG. Unfortunately for him, his own adopted daughter was plotting to kill him with her secret biker gang. She used the Onimas to resurrect Garmadon, and the former King of Shadows took up a new role as Emperor of Ninjago. He ruled for about a week before the Resistance struck back and he was deposed and arrested. Does Ninjago now have a new Emperor? Who knows? Thousands of years ago, peace between the Serpentine and humans was agreed by the first Minjutsu Master and King Mambo V, an ancient Hypnobrai, ensuring neither side would cross into each other's territory. Unfortunately, this peace was threatened by Wu, who then taught a sphere of Spinjitsu which she used to try and overthrow the king. She was thwarted by Wu and Garmadon, however, and imprisoned in a magical tomb. When Zane was trapped in the Neverome after a sphere was released, he was ambushed by Vex and he had his memories wiped. With the scroll of forbidden Spinjitsu in his hand, they usurped King Grimfax and took the throne. Zane ruled the Neverrealm as the Ice Emperor, bringing about a terrible chill that would take over the entire realm had Lloyd not freed him and restored Grimfax to the throne. The mysterious Unagami ruled over Prime Empire, and he got his name from Milton Dyer, the unfinished adventure game won. He turned into a ruthless tyrant when Milton Dyer shut down Prime Empire after Scott became trapped inside, and later came into contact with the mechanic. They hatched a plan to bring him into Ninjago by trapping players from Ninjago inside the game and turning them into cubes. Once freed, everyone from Prime Empire returned to the real world, and after a showdown against Jay, he reunited with Milton Dyer and turned into a child to be raised by him. Prime Empire was also home to another king, Atta the Ratter, though we don't know what he looks like. He was the king of the rats. Vangelis was the king of Shintaro with a dark secret. While on the surface he's a benevolent ruler who cares for his people, deep below he's a ruthless tyrant using the skull of Hazardur to enslave the Geckles and Munts to mine Vengestone for a secret operation. He kept the two tribes divided against each other by stealing the ivory blades of deliverance and tricking each side into thinking the other had stolen theirs. Cole eventually defeated him and he was imprisoned, allowing his daughter Vanya to take the throne. The benevolent king of Melopia, Trimar, ruled for years, raising his son Prince Kalmar and his adopted son Prince Benthamar, who he saved from eels as a baby. Unfortunately for him, Kalmar had aspirations to release Wajira, and when the ninja came to Merlopia, Kalmar took this chance to kill his father and take the throne, framing the ninja for it and convincing Merlopia that they needed to release Wajira to fight against the surface world. King Kalmar would set about finding the storm emulator in Ninjago and returned it to Wajira's head, finally awakening the beast. She flooded Ninjago City under Kalmar's control, but during a fight with Benthamar, his staff was destroyed, and Wajira turned on him, eating him much like the Devourer did with Pythor years before. With Kalmar gone, the throne passed to his adopted brother King Benthamar, who eventually helped the ninja battle against the Crystal King, otherwise known as the Overlord. He used Harumi to assemble his council, featuring former kings Pythor and Vangelis. He built up his crystal army, stole the golden weapons, and launched an attack on Ninjago once again. He almost came close to winning too, until the ninja sacrificed the golden weapons to form the Ultra Dragon to help Lloyd win the fight. And the Bone King from Ninjago Core is a mysterious villain. His design is fantastic and he commands quite an army. He may be a former ruler of the underworld, ruling long before Samukai did. Though he doesn't yet have a canon appearance in the show, there's always a chance we could see him show up in Dragon's Rising. 
His design is fantastic, but then so are most skeletons in Ninjago, and you can see them all right now by clicking on screen. Or you could click to go watch another video. In any case, that's it for now, so I'll see you again very soon.